So for the first notification, I'm going to log in as an HR professional so that we can review a member's CPA license. So we're coming in, I will be working off the HR professional landing page and also off the profile management file. And we'll receive our member using the employee ID. So for us to access the certification, we'll select the qualifications tab at the top and we'll scroll toward the bottom to locate the professional certification section. And we'll see that our member has a CPA license and they're set, it's set to expire on September the 1st of 2020. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to manually kick off the process that reviews the expiration date and generates the email so that you can see the email. Uh, keep in mind this would actually be automated on a scheduled basis. And I need to log out as the HR professional because the HR professional would never have access to execute the process. So I'm now going to log in as a sustainment admin just to kick off this process. Okay, and so as the sustainment admin, I'm working from the navigator and I will navigate out to enterprise components, events and notifications, alerts, run alerts. So I already have a run control ID set up, so I'm just gonna kick this off. And then let me make sure my process initiated. Okay, so I'm going to let this run. This should send me an email, but I'm going to keep moving through this and then we'll come back to the email. Okay, so I'm processing now. So what I'm going to do is for the second part of the rise step, I mentioned that we would have an alert that goes to a member in self-service when um, a KSB has been updated on their behalf. So in order to accomplish this, I'm going to log back in as the HR professional and we will update a KSB for the member, and then we'll log in as the member to see the alert. So again, just like before, we'll work from the HR professional landing page. I'll select the profile management file, and we'll retrieve our member using their employee ID. So for this particular member, I'm going to update um, an assignment information preference. So I will navigate to the Assignment information tab, and I will select from the special duty interest. So I will be adding a special duty interest for my member. I'll leave the effective date. It defaults to the current date, so we'll accept that. I'm going to select an interest. So for this particular member, we're going to go with airborne duty preferred. And then I'll save this off. Okay, so. Now I'm going to log out as the HR professional and we will log in as this particular member so that we can receive our alert that something was updated for us. So we wanted to provide a notification to the member about updates, but we wanted to do so in a manner that's a little less formal than an email and also be cognizant of the fact that we have over 90 KSBs that could trigger a notification. So what we elected to use was this simple self-service alert. So I've logged in as my member, we're working off the self-service landing page, and I look to the upper right-hand corner for the notification icon, which is this little flag. And so it lets me know by the red circle with the one in it that I have an alert. So if I click into this, my alert tells me that uh, my talent profile item was updated. This scrambled stuff here would actually tell me who updated it for me, and then it Oh, this is the SQF. Okay, so I'll double check that in just a minute. But anyway, this is the type of alert that we would see if something had been updated on our behalf. Okay, this is the email that you received. So our member gets this handy notification to let them know, hey, this particular certification for you is set to expire and it gives the expiration date. And we have a short explanation that reminds them, hey, it's going to expire in 90 days. So. That was from the process that we kicked off when I logged in as a sustainment admin. So you've seen the email notification that goes out for the 90 day alert. We looked at the self-service alert that the member receives when something has been updated on their behalf. 
And so that covers our RISA for CS023. So while I'm logged into self-service as a member, we're going to shift into our next RISA, which is E131 self-service user interface. So we've actually shown you guys some pieces of this before in a previous checkpoint. I think I had used it to demonstrate uh, an inbound interface from Cool. And so you'll see a couple of pieces today that look familiar. So one of the things that I always like to remind people of when they're coming into self-service is they can do all their KSDs in self-service, even the ones that they don't have access to update. So I'm working from the My Profile tile. And so one of the KSDs that we can look at that a member would not have access to update would be skills. So for example, they're able to see their skills but they're not actually able to do any edits to them. So I'll go into one so that you can see everything remains read only. And then they have this handy reminder that they're not authorized to update this. So we differentiate, um, or rather we refer to the KSDs that a member is allowed to maintain. We call those self-professed KSDs. And so most of those are located in the assignment information section and in the self-professed section. So we have several that are very simple data entries. So for example, let's take a look at the stabilization preference. So it tells me that no data exists and because I have the ability to update and maintain my data here, the add button is available to me. So I select it. So for this one, I'll say the, I'll accept the effective date, which is the current date. I'm going to select the stabilization preference for this particular one, I'll say no preference. Um, I'll acknowledge this, that I'm submitting this information, and then I'm going to give it a through date. And I'll save this all. So super easy, right? We also have some self-professed KSDs in which we would expect a member may have multiple values and would prefer a streamlined way to enter. So let's look at something like hobbies and interests. And so this is the piece that you guys actually saw before when we demonstrated cool. So this will look familiar to you. So for hobbies and interests, again, it lets us know, hey, there, you haven't added anything and the add button is available to us. So we'll go in and select our group type. We'll select our subcategory. I'm actually going to use outdoor and physical activity. And so what's great about this, because we would expect or we would, you know, like that our member has multiple values to add that they want to share with us. So we're displaying the values all at once. And so for them to select their values, it's super easy. They just use the selection button. So I'm going to pick camping, cave diving, and climbing. So we had, we were looking for the start date because the member can enter in an approximate start date of when they began an activity. So I'm just going to update these very quickly. And then let's say that climbing is a new activity for us. Okay, so then they would need to also fill in the proficiency. So they can use the prompt to select the proficiency. And so what they'll notice is it's beginner, intermediate, and expert, so one, two, three. So for this particular activity camping, I'm going to say I'm intermediate. And I noticed that it populates a two for me. So I'm thinking maybe for quicker entry, instead of having to go back through the prompt, I can just enter the values. So one was beginner, so I'll pop in a one here. And for climbing, I'll say, I'll say I'm a beginner here as well, so one. And then I'll save this guy off. So what I like about when we use this particular way to mass update some of our self-professed KSDs, so when we come back to the main screen, it shows us what we had entered. And so we can go in and edit these individually. So for example, in camping, if I wanted to add a new version, because let's say as of today, I am now an expert, I can do that. Is this off? 
And then let's say maybe cave diving, I was injured recently and maybe I'm not really interested in cave diving anymore. So I can also delete this out. So that is the nice thing because these are self-professed. So these are up to the members. So if they choose to remove something, it's easy for them to remove it. But also when you have categories like hobbies and interests, let's say I wanted to come back in and enter more at a later date. What's nice about this is when I come back into that particular subcategory, the outdoor and physical activity, it reminds me of the things that I had previously entered and those are shown to me at the top. So that way I don't, when I come back into this math update screen, I don't have to wonder what have I previously entered before. So this takes care of our E131 self-service user interface. Cancel on it here. And so we have one last RISAF to go through with you guys. So I'm going to log out of self-service as a member. And I'm actually going to log back in as our good old HR professional. So the, we are moving into RISEF CF025 KSB dashboard. Uh, we created a navigation collection for this. And so by doing that, I was able to add a tile to my navigator. So this is my nav bar and here's my KSB dashboard tile. And for some reason, I cannot say dashboard today. Um, so one of the things to think about this is this is like a alternate way for us to look at KSBs and everything is in one place. So that's the purpose of the dashboard. So you'll see right now my screen shows the person profile, which is the same thing as our profile management tile from the HR landing page. So it's just another quick and easy way to get into the person profiles and it's the purpose of the dashboard was allow us to track a couple of KSBs and just remember that you would continue to do your detailed analysis or trending in BI. Um, in order to actually make this uh, rise up a little more accessible, you're getting to see a uh, bonus rise up. So you're seeing R003, the predefined queries. We have a couple of predefined queries that you can use to highlight particular KSBs or maybe use as a quick status to see if a member has completed any self-professed KSBs. The point of um, providing predefined KSDs or predefined queries, excuse me, is that we've laid out kind of the bones of what tables need to be used and maybe some of the simple logic just to retrieve these values. So in this dashboard, we have a self-professed language report and what it's showing me is which of my members have self-professed the language and what language that is. One of the things to remember when you're within a dashboard and you're working with queries is that in the in the system we would apply row level security so you're only executing the query against the members you have access to you're not digging into other units or departments that you wouldn't have authorization for so again we limit it to what you're actually allowed to see um, we also have a report for a special duty so if any of our members have self-professed a special duty interest we show the employee id their name, and then what value they selected we also have a report that tells me, oh wow, we have a member that has not professed any self-professed KSB. So this is kind of a handy way just to kind of check in with your members to see who's been going into self-service and taking care of their profile. Um, one of the other ones that we had was the stabilization report, which just shows if they've indicated a stabilization preference. And then we also have a report for if we have people that have professed KSBs, but they haven't updated them within the last year because we would be hopeful that they're going in on a regular basis to update them at the very least within the past year. So this takes care of um, the three right stuff that we covered. So as a summary, in the beginning, we saw the CF023 notification. So we got the email notification 90 days before our professional license expired. The member also receives a self-service alert if someone has updated a KSB on their behalf. We reviewed the self-service user interface, which is our E131. So we looked at the, um, the fact that they're viewing read-only KSBs, but they're also maintaining their self-professed. 
So we looked at one with simple data entry, and then we looked at one with um, mass update entry. And then we closed off on the CS025, our KSD dashboard, and you got the bonus of the R003 KSD queries. 